years old. And I'm 24. I'm 27, the oldest. Well, I had that feeling probably back in 1998. And I just wanted to start dancing. So I actually started doing country dancing, which was line dancing. So it ended up into hip hop, which is my main passion. Because it started with me as a little girl. Um, writing music really took a lot of stress and a lot of pressure off of me. That was kind of my escape. So um, it started early with me and I just incorporated it into something else, something more to where I'm not just being afraid from it, but the world is being afraid from it. And not just because of what I'm writing, but because of who I'm writing for, which is God. Yeah, you know, my, my mom, she was hearing me a lot and other people who I stayed with because I was in foster care, me and my sister both. And um, a lot of my, um, some of my foster parents encouraged me. They was like, oh, she's not. And you know, they like, at family reunions, get together, putting me out there in the front. Um, well, I can say I was blessed 1991 from birth, because it says in the Bible, you, you was ordained while you was in your mother's womb, but God teaches you. So, while I was in my mother's womb, I believe God was putting his hand on me, he was blessing me, as in molding me, as in to what he wanted me to come out to be. So, by me having to get a chance to express my feeling, and the way I feel at dancing, because I was like at five, three, two on the front street, at the street, you know, out there at the street part of it was with the right. You could be in the front street, you know, a, a amazing crowds around me, admiring me, that I can get out there at a such an early age and perform. And just like this is, you know, you know, you have some people that have talent, then you have some people that have been blessed with the talent that I have given them. <laughs> we come for Christ is definitely different. Well, I know, like, as far as going to school, you know, and even back then, sometimes kids and, and peer pressure can be so hard as they growing up, especially coming from the background, most of these youth these days come from, as in broken homes, no fathers in the homes, um, single parents in homes, drug addiction problems, dealing with that. So, so how we dealt with that was we find positive errors to get into, we kept we involved. We tried to find stuff to get involved. Yeah, it was times we, we, we didn't have the best stuff. It was times, well, we didn't have the latest side of the latest shoes or the latest gear or whatever like that. But we kept what we had to do and we got involved mm -hmm. in positive things. As far as like if it was sports, cheerleading, anything like that. Anything to keep my mind occupied. And I know eventually staying in school, get my education, and that the rest will follow. You know, I was I was a really huge, but I wasn't a fight the fighting type. I was mostly like humble because I felt kind of ashamed that I didn't have the things that other children have, so they kind of made me shut down into a shell. But eventually, when I start going to church, because I was raised in church, start going to church and start getting involved in things as far as like, well, God, I need Jesus love. Me. So when I knew Jesus loved me, I could start loving myself. When I start loving myself, okay, I don't have to have the things of the world. I don't have to have the shoes. I don't have to have the, um, the nice clothes. I'm still a person. I'm still somebody. And that carried me through. Well, I was actually bullied in school. <laughs> um, my first year in high school, so I was a freshman. And the way I actually overcame that was by dancing. Because everybody else in school, they wasn't dancing. So I was actually telling a story through my dancing. So I would actually dance. Um, yeah, I I was bullied in school, um, but I had a different approach with it. I've always seen the nicer side of people. You know, I see the nicer person that's within them. Instead of looking at the mean bully, I'm looking at what got you so mad. Let's touch that and maybe you can stop being so loud. That you know, is. And, um, and that's what I say to a lot of kids now. People that bully you, you still have to pray for. Still have to be nice for them because there's something in them that has them angry at everybody else. So, you know, um, try to get close to them, see what's going on because normally that bully can wind up being the best friend. Eating healthy is good, but we don't always make the best choice. But I do want to get healthier being in the field that I'm in, and um, I really want to see a progress in order for it to do that. I have to put myself in a position to where I'm going to have longevity in this business. Mm -hmm. And having longevity is definitely keeping mm -hmm. myself healthy. You know, having to um, be real clear with my lyrics, can't right. run out of breath. Yeah, um, my favorite, my favorite color is different. I love the, you know, the sky blue. I just, I just, you know, the water is blue. I just like, I just love blue. I really don't have no, no particular 
on the style of clothing I don't have. I like baby fat. But hey, if I can't get the baby fat, then I, you know, I ain't got no problem going to get with it and look like a million dollars. Well, my favorite color, I love red, orange, anything bright on it. It's all neon colors. Mm -hmm. I love the A's. A's in New York, too. I feel like um, the clothes don't make you make the clothes. So, you know, you can start your own trend up. Like I say, I go to Big Wheel and, and, and still follow. Like I have paid a million bucks, which I have actually saved a whole lot of money. So, you know, and I can use that money towards something else, towards something more positive. You know, so, I mean, it, it's okay to not have what everybody else has. That makes you unique and make you the person that you are. I say, um, I'm definitely a spender. I asked God just yesterday to work with me on that because sometimes I spend too much. So um, I think saving is very, very important. You know, um, we have to put away for a rainy day. You know, money don't last always. Money comes, money goes. You know, so you just have to be smart in everything that you do, especially with your finances. Because how hard times are now, how the economy is, you need a safety net, a bag of money, and then you can fall back to education. Mm -hmm. College, so you need your good job because it's hard out here doing, you know, I've done it with Wendy's and with all that good stuff like that. Even with those jobs, you can say it too. So, you know, um, but if you can, if you're in school, try to finish school so that you don't have to go through that struggle. But um, even working that job, just still say whatever you're doing. If you're going to school and get a school cheap, say you put it away for a rainy day. And if you have kids, make sure that they're going to be set for the future. Make sure you have life insurance. Make sure you have life insurance for the kids, everything that you need. So if something happens to you, the children will be okay. Because you don't want them to go through the struggle that you went through coming up or that you're going through now. If you're not going through a struggle, you already know that it's still in your children. And, um, you can hold classes or something and help other people learn how to do that. But it's very important that you say. I, have, I get really, really nervous when it's about 10 people. But I be so energized when it's about a thousand people. But otherwise, they don't see the nerves. We pray. That's how we prepare mm. before we perform and tell God and, and ask God to guide our steps and to guide our feet. So you know, we do all things Christ's strength us. My wish would be 